Hey everybody, thanks for clicking on this video. My name is David Pendleton, and I am working on a pretty big project that I think a lot of people will be excited about on non-tournament weeks. And what it is so far, it's all about tour number eight. So on non-tournament weeks, or really in general, I get a lot of questions through my Facebook account, through Messenger, and sometimes on YouTube comments, wanting to know how to play a certain hole or you know, somebody who follows me is stuck in a particular shootout and they want me to take a look at a replay and give them advice on how to win the hole more often. And really, the majority of questions come from tour number eight, which is why I'm starting here. Now, um, here's what I would say about this video in particular. I would just challenge you to just listen to the whole thing so you understand what I am working on and ultimately how it's going to help you become a better golf clash player. So here's what I am doing. I'm going to be releasing a series of videos that cover each course in tour number eight and every single hole with every single shot uh, covered in detail as I normally do. This is going to be intended to teach anyone to become a better player at Golf Clash overall. And I'm going to show you the tips and tricks that you need to know to be set up on every single hole in tour number eight. I'm going to cover what clubs I think are the best approach. I'm going to suggest a couple different bag options. Um, and I'm going to let you know the clubs that I suggest you use, how to level them up very quickly um, that I think a lot of people don't know. And lastly, I'm going to cover something that is not really ever talked about, which is Golf Clash's ball value system. Okay, now uh, I've been playing tour number eight for a long time. Uh, I have three total Golf Clash accounts that I play one-on-one -on -one play with, and I have four accounts in total that I play tournaments. So of my four accounts, only three of them do I ever grind from time to time. The other one is strictly just a tournament-only rookie level uh, that I use for Golf Clash uh, tournament um, videos on YouTube. Now, these are the courses that are in tour number eight right now. Vineyard Acres, Grunberg Slopes, and Eagle Peak. Um, Golf Clash, you know, may change these. So if you're watching this video a year from now, uh, this is the courses that I'm covering. And, you know, as long as they're still played from the second tee, then everything is going to be relevant. So what I will be doing is I'm going to be releasing um, every single course, like I said, in every hole. And I'm going to organize it through my playlist section. So let's say you're playing Eagle Peak, uh, hole number eight, and that's a hole that you struggle with. You'll be able to go to my channel, go to the playlist section, and it's going to be right there labeled Eagle Peak, hole number eight. And I'll do that for every single course and every single hole so that it's in one uh, playlist section. And I'm going to label that playlist Tour 8. So that's how, that's how you'll easily find a hole that you're looking for. Now, uh, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Please hit the thumbs up button uh, if you like this video. And last but not least, I'm actually going to show you uh, how to save money on this game. And I'm going to show you how you can play tour number eight and dominate it with only one ball, which is a navigator. Now, you can play each hole with any ball that you want to. My videos, my approach, my shootouts are all going to be relevant to you regardless of the ball that you use. But I do play this this tour with a navigator only. And the, the thing that I think about that on why that's important is it's important that you use the balls that you're comfortable with and whatever makes the game fun for you. Okay, but let me have you think about something real quick. Let's say you're a player who changes out balls a lot. So let's say maybe you play one hole with a navigator and then the next time, you know, you play a berserker. But what happens if you get a shootout, okay, and you played it with a navigator and then you play it with a berserker? You're going to be playing the shootout completely different based on the ball that you use which means you're gonna have a hard time finding consistency. Now, if you just pretend for a second that everybody had to use the same ball, okay? You only got to use one ball in the game. 
eventually, right, you would know exactly where to set up on every single shot the exact same way, no matter the win situation, because you're forcing yourself to only use one ball. So in my videos, you're going to see me use one ball for the most part. There's, there's one hole with one exception that I use a katana on tour number eight. But you're going to see that because I use one ball on every single shootout, regardless of the wind, I'm able to play it the exact same way. So eventually, you just memorize how much spin you need and where you need to set your club at. And you're going to be hitting these shootouts, you know, within a couple yards like crazy. But anyways, I've done all the lay work. Um, I've done all the preparation that you need so that you know where to set up. Uh, if you like my videos, if you find them helpful, you can help support my channel uh, through donations. I don't have a membership set up or anything like that. But if you like my work and, and I'm somebody who you go to for a reference, you know, my PayPal link is at the bottom. Um, it's in the comment section of every video that I release. Okay, so now let's talk about clubs. I want you to keep in mind that I'm fairly newer to YouTube, okay? So my clubs are higher than what most players are going to be when they enter tour number eight. But my clubs were not these levels when I entered tour number eight. You can go way back to when I first started YouTube, and you can probably see me play tour number eight um, with like an extra mile six and a sniper six or seven. That is where I started tour number eight, and um, I dominated uh, the tour very quickly. And I'll kind of show you why I think um, I'm somebody that can give you good advice. So here is one of my accounts that plays tour number eight. It's at a 79% winning percentage, a little bit over 4,100 games. This winning percentage was higher, um, but with Golf Clash's new draw system in tournaments where you can tie somebody on a hole and there is no shootout, that goes against your winning percentage if you don't win the hole. So this is one of my Tour 8 accounts, okay? And this is another one of my Tour 8 accounts. Um, this one's over 7,000 games with a 79% winning percentage. On both these accounts, I started playing Tour 8 with an extra mile 6 and a sniper 6 or 7. If you want to know how to quickly get your extra mile up, here's all you need to do. A lot of people don't know that Tour number 2 has a very high drop rate for extra mile cards. About 20 to 25% of the chests that you open in Tour number 2 are going to have an extra mile. One out of every four gold chests is going to contain between five to eight extra mile cards. So if you're somebody who has a lot of gems and you don't mind grinding a very low tour, you can hop into tour number two right now. The holes only take minutes to play. They're very short holes. They're very fast. And if you speed open your chest, you can really boost your extra mile club extremely fast. Now, the same can go for your sniper. You can play tour number six over and over and over again and open up chests like crazy, and you're going to get yourself a lot of sniper cards. So those are the two tours that will help you build those particular clubs. The last thing that I want to say about clubs and Golf Clash is um, you need to treat this like any other video game which I don't think a lot of people do. I think you see a lot of people say, oh, this game is rigged and it's set up to make you lose or you have to pay to play. First of all, you know, I'm not here to debate with you, but that's all false. You're looking at somebody's account who wins 80% of their games, who wins a bunch of tournaments. Um, if the game was set up to make you lose, then why am I not losing? Okay, so think about that. If the game was set up to make you lose, then why are all these other players who are on YouTube that you can watch them play live, okay? Tommy back in the day used to play Tour 12 like crazy live. The guy would go on 15, 20 game winning streaks. Um, same thing for other phenomenal players. Uh, Fenzel, you know, Iceman. Um, just a lot of people that constantly win tournaments and they win a lot more Tour games or one-on-one -on -one games than they lose, if the game was rigged or, or set up to make you lose and the game sent out bots to play against you to make you lose and spend money, then they would be doing that to everybody. And I'm nobody special. I'm not sponsored by the game. Um, I'm somebody who used to get their butt kicked at the game, and I'm not going to go through that story now. But I end up researching the game and learning the ring system. Um, 
and just become a better player. And I used to, you know, on one hole, play a kingmaker. On another hole, use a money ball. And it just became very confusing. Uh, and the thing that you want to do is you want to be set up for success. So you need to treat this game like you would any other video game. And what I mean by that is you don't rush through it. Uh, I'm a huge fan of role-playing games. So like open world games that kind of just start off the game in the middle of a map. Okay. And you can go whatever way you want to. You know, you could walk into a dungeon and that dungeon may be uh, set up in a way that you're going to lose at a very low level character player um, because, you know, it's, it's just meant for you to enter at a later time in the game. Now, you can go in there and get crushed and have fun trying to do it, or you can spend the time to walk around the map very tedious and fight lower level enemies and upgrade your equipment, right? Upgrade your weapons, upgrade your spells, whatever the case may be, and then prepare to go into that dungeon later. This game is no different, okay? You need to spend time grinding away in lower tours to upgrade your equipment before you hop into a higher tour. So for example, if you're going to hop into tour number eight with an extra mile four and a Viper eight, you can do so. You're going to win a few games, but you're going to lose more games than not just because you don't have the right equipment and the preparation necessary to win this tour at a very high level. So that's what I could say about that. Um, so here we go. Now, the last thing I'm going to cover in this video is really going to be ball value. And this is what I think a lot of players um, don't look at or maybe have never really thought of. But again, this, this game was designed with, you know, a lot of things in play. So I'm going to cover every free ball that you can earn in Golf Clash. So the Marlin, right, the Navigator, the Quasar, the Titan, the Katana, Kingmaker, and last but not least, the Berserker. So if we take a look at the Marlin, if you want to buy these balls, if you don't have to, um, because you get a lot of them for free, <laughs> regardless what tour you play, unfortunately. You know, I get a lot of Marlins in tour number eight chess or whatever the case is. But, you know, Golf Clash has an in-game currency. The currency is gems. You can use gems to buy balls, okay? You can use gems to buy other things. But if you want to buy nine Marlins, that only costs you 25 gems, if you want to buy nine Quasars or Navigators, it costs you 60, as these um, balls have the same value. Golf Clash values the Navigator and the Quasar at the exact same value when it comes to gems. Same thing for a Titan and a Katana. A Titan or a Katana, to buy nine balls, costs you 180 gems. Nine Kingmakers cost you 650 gems and these balls do not drop commonly in the free reward systems okay your chest or whatever the case may be a lot of them don't drop and i see so many players use this ball in one-on-one -on -one play and it's not necessary and berserker uh last but not least you can't even buy you can only win this for free in two ways. The first way is your hard edition of your golden shot, or if you play master's tournaments, um, you can win these as prizes. So, you know, what I've done here is, is this. Is I've broken this down to what each ball cost you currency-wise. So one Marlin is worth three gems. A Navigator or Quasar is worth seven, and I rounded those up. A Titan and Katana is worth 20 gems. A Kingmaker is worth 72. And a Berserker, like I said, you can't even buy. So, um, you know, keep that in mind when you think about what balls you're going to use. Um, is it really worth pulling out a Kingmaker that is worth 72 gems, that you don't get a lot of them for free, just to win one game? You don't need to win 100% of your games to be successful at Golf Clash. You just need to win six out of every 10 games to be successful. 
And I'm going to teach you how to win a lot more than six out of every 10 games. So that is it for this video. So I think we covered a lot of things. You know, we covered... Um, oh, I'm sorry. It's not it for this video. We have one more thing. We're going to talk about what clubs that I think is going to have you set up for the most success. Now, again, keep in mind, I started tour number eight with a lot less level clubs. But here are the three bags that I use in tour number eight. I use the extra mile and all these clubs you're seeing right here. As far as secondary clubs, meaning your wood, your long iron, your short iron, your wedge, your rough iron, your sand wedge, I never change those. So these are the best clubs, in my opinion, to play number tour number eight with. I use the Goliath because of the power and because of the ring pull. The ring pull on the Goliath is very small. So what do I mean by that? All right, so let me show you um, an example here, okay? So let's say that I am playing my Goliath, and let's say that I get a five and a half mile per hour wind. Notice that there is only one ring difference between minimum distance and maximum distance. So if I'm at max distance, I need to pull 2.9. If I'm at medium distance, I need to pull 2.4. By keeping the, the margins this low, as long as you hit your ball perfect, you have a very good chance at dropping the shot. Let me show you a club that a lot of players use in tour number eight, and that is a Grizzly. Now look at the difference. 3.8 to 5.4. So now you're talking about almost two full rings of a difference when it comes to pulling between minimum distance and maximum distance. That leaves you open to more room for error, more chances of missing your extra drop, okay? That is why I use these clubs. Now, it's up to you. You can use whatever clubs you want. Again, keep the game fun. Whatever clubs you like to use, you use. But this is what I use. I would say for 99% of holes, this is the bag that I use. There's only one exception. Eagle Peak, hole number eight, you're always going to use a big topper, okay? And you're going to see why when we get to the Eagle Peak hole number eight video. And there is one hole on Eagle Peak. I believe it's Eagle Peak hole number nine. If you get a nasty headwind, I suggest you use a quarterback. So those are the bags that I use in tour number eight. That is it. The only club I swap out is the driver, and that is on an extremely rare occasion. All right, so I'm excited to start releasing the content. Um, it's going to come over the next couple weeks, but Eagle Peak will start getting released today. Um, so be looking out for that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope we pick up some subscribers along the way, and best of luck.